And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Brought to you by good friends over at Skip. Welcome to another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice. Week 18, waiver wire edition, Nick Alberga, Pete Jensen, and Anna Dua with you. What's going on, Pete? What's up, Nick? Yeah, Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL, and the LA Kings delivered over the weekend with a victory in their first game under new coach Jim Hiller against the Edmonton Oilers, so major, major props there. What's going on, Anna? Not much. I mean, a lot's been happening. Football's over. We can now just focus entirely on hockey, guys, and there's a lot to talk about. The playoffs are coming up. They're creeping up on us. Yeah, and I think when you talk about the LA Kings specifically, I thought it was uh, kind of fascinating that it's Pierre-Luc Dubois to score the first goal in the Jim Hiller era. But why don't we start there, guys? Because I thought it was kind of intriguing, Pete, that they don't go with Cam Talbot, but they go with David Riddick in between the pipes in that game. They call him Big Save Dave, and he's been coming up major for that team at least a couple of times in the past month or so. And Anna, that's better than nothing, right? Because Cam Talbot's best performance of the past month or so was in the All-Star game. Uh, We've yet to see him really live up to what he did earlier in the season. So, hey, opportunity here, you know, fresh slate for everybody on this roster. Uh, And one good nugget I saw was Victor Arvidsson has been skating regularly, Anna. This is a guy, the second he comes back from injury, it's been a few months since he's played NHL hockey, but I'm excited to see him back with that shot volume and everything else. Yeah, I can't believe we were all like somewhat sold on Cam Talbot being in like the Vesna conversation based off of the way the Kings started off their year. And even when I look at their metrics right now, guys, they're still top five in the NHL in the fewest shots on goal allowed per game, goals allowed per game. So you think about how much they've fallen off and how strong they were at the beginning of the year for them to still be that high up in these categories. And it makes me think that's a team that's set for a bounce back, right, Nick, if they're still performing that well overall? Yeah, I love the buy low appeal of this LA Kings uh, team in general and uh, very intrigued to see what happens in between the pipes. NHL.com slash fantasy. Let's get to this week's waiver wireless for sure. Um, We'll start in between the pipes, Pete, um, and and stick with Riddick. That's certainly a name that I would look at on the waiver wire right now. But uh, how about Samuel Arison? Just when I thought and we thought maybe Philadelphia was done, uh, Arison turned in a really, really good week and now has emerged as a fantasy option again. Right, and it's his job for the rest of the season. And I know that we saw what Cal Peterson play. I mean, I don't trust him at all. So (laughs) it's Arison's team. He's quietly been, Anna, like a top five rookie this season just because so many have... So many of them have been banged up, right? Kachetkov's back now. Joseph Wall still hasn't seen anything since, uh, you know, November or whatever it was. So uh, all of a sudden, like, Arison with this type of runway and workload ahead could certainly finish among the top five rookies, I think. He's an option I'm definitely heavily considering. The one thing that does worry me when we're looking at the sample size of the two good games he had was he didn't make 30 saves in either of those games. So you wonder if those were just off nights for the teams he was playing against. and How will he perform if he gets a little bit stronger shot volume against him? But Philadelphia overall as a team, guys, like, I don't know. I like them. I don't know why. I feel like they're (laughs) gritty. And if there's a team that can sneak in and surprise us all, despite whatever's been going on in Philadelphia this year, it might be the the Flyers, Nick. Yeah, the best thing about Philadelphia is I think they'd be a really, really difficult out in a seven-game series, and you can't say that for other teams currently involved in the playoff conversation in both conferences. Speaking of which, Anna, the Calgary Flames, since since last we talked, obviously the Kuzmenko show has continued. Uh, Jonathan Huberto has been really, really good as of late, and those are two prolific names on this week's uh, waiver wire list, right? The Calgary Flames, man, I feel like every time I start doubting this team, and I have reason to because it seemed like they sold all of their pieces and they were down and out, the pieces they get in return suddenly look like decent players. And Andre Kuzmenko was a guy we highlighted for sure in terms of his bounce back appeal. It's not just Lindholm going to Vancouver, but Kuzmenko's shooting percentage abysmally low this year. And last year it was way too high. I think it's going to meet in the middle. He has a new environment, no pressure, more opportunity to get more ice time. So that might be like my favorite waiver wire pickup this week. There are two teams right now that are heating up and not enough people are talking about them. It's the Calgary Flames and the St. Louis Blues. The Blues have won like seven of eight and the Flames have won four in a row and three and oh since that change to Kuzmenko. So I think there are a lot of ways to tap into both of these teams, Nick. Like 
for the Blues, there's Letty, there's Krug, there's right uh, the goaltender Hofer or however you say it. I mean, there's um, you know Jake Neighbors leads them in goals this year. And then of course for Calgary, you could tap into their goaltender Jacob Markstrom, a bounce back player in the second half. And then some of their defensemen and forwards as well, like just very, very sneaky. And that team's hot, hot, hot right now. Yeah, I like Noah Hannafin as well. We'll see what happens over the next couple weeks uh, pertaining to him and the trade deadline. But I, I like your note on St. Louis because they're a team I want to bring up on today's show. 15-7-1 and one under Drew Bannister. They've won seven of eight. You mentioned Tory Krug. I would pick him up. He's feeling good about life. Five assists against the Montreal Canadiens on Sunday. And I don't know why, and I said it at the time of the coaching change, why can't the Blues, Pete, go on another one of those like crazy, crazy Craig Bruby type runs? And it's starting. I know it's very, very early, but I mean, you look at the record, and the, the one thing that always stands out for me is the depth. Like you talk about a neighbor as a guy who sprinkled up and down that roster. Like that's the MO of the St. Louis Blues and their Doug Armstrong, and it continues. So Jake Neighbors, Pete, specifically is a guy, uh, obviously people should be looking at at the waiver wire this week. Definitely. The the offense has been getting going, you know, since the new year. And I feel like that team, both of those teams, it's kind of like they've been making trades in recent years. The guys that are there are probably the guys that want to be there and that are trying to seize this opportunity, Anna. So, you know, could one of them get into the playoffs if nobody else seizes it out in the West? Like teams, I'm talking about teams like Minnesota, Seattle, Arizona, none of them have been world beaters of late. Some suspect losses for all of them. So maybe one of those two teams and Nashville including. So, uh, yeah, I, I could see one of those two teams sneaking in. I wouldn't be surprised if Calgary makes a run for it, actually, like depending on what's going on with the Jacob Markstrom situation and all of that. Like that could be a team where everyone thinks they sold all their pieces, but they still managed to make the postseason. The St. Louis Blues. I don't know. I'm just not sold on them. Like as a team, I didn't have them making the playoffs in the preseason. I get that they're in the second wild card spot right now, but Mm -hmm. I think Nashville and Calgary have enough leg room to catch up to them. Minnesota, I would have loved to see turn their season around. I just think the injuries and everything caught up to them. So they're down and out, but St. Louis, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not feeling the vibes. That's not like a fantasy justification. I'm just not feeling the vibes guys. If you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. And uh, we'll see how, how the ne- next couple of weeks go. I mean, I think St. Louis is a middling team where it's like they could buy, they could sell. You just never know with Doug Armstrong. But one juicy name, guys, that I really liked on, on your list this week was Uri Slefkovsky. And a five-game point streak has notched at least a point in eight of his last ten games. And I think we forget sort of the pedigree of the player where he was selected, or really finding his game, not only in reality, but in the fantasy world. I, I think he's a really good option this week. Yeah, if you live in Montreal, you have definitely not forgotten where he was selected. True. A lot of the folks <laughs> up there have been waiting for a long time for him to show flashes of how good he can be. And that's what he's showing right now. His shot volume, too, has really impressed me, has consistently had like three plus shots on goals in his last little stretch. He's been scoring, too. It's not just the point streak. He has four goals during that streak as well. So... Just making up, Sean Monaghan's gone. The Montreal Canadiens are figuring out where they're going next, and he has to be the big piece, right, to push this team to the next level, Pete. Right, and I think, like, going into the trade deadline, they're probably going to make some more moves. You know, you don't know what kind of skeleton crew this roster is going to look like uh, after the dust settles, after the trade deadline, but... You know that Slavkovsky is going to be there. You know that Caulfield is going to be there. You know that Suzuki is going to be there. And you know that probably Matheson is going to be there. And that's enough for me to say this team is going to remain competitive like they have all season long. No matter what the production swings have been, Cole Caulfield, 11-game point streak just came to an end. But he's another guy that has been peaking so far this year. And yeah, it's been good to see Slavkovsky play the best stretch of his NHL career right now. Maybe he's one of those second half sleepers that could really make a difference in your fantasy championship run. And I'll tie the next game up to you. And uh, obviously you had the meeting of uh, your both your worlds over the weekend, New Jersey and uh, Carolina and a shutout for mm-hmm. Pyotr Kachekov, a one nothing hockey game. Tavo, Teravine, and he have a contract here. We like him this week, right? <laughs> We absolutely like him. I've liked him from the beginning of the season. I feel like you can't go wrong with a guy like that. Contract year, also the lineup placement. He's a great player when he's healthy. I think people forget because of how injured he was that he's a good guy. He's a good guy to have on your fantasy roster. And his lineup placement is insane right now in their top line with Sebastian Ajo. Andrei Sveshnikov also coming back from injury for the Canes. That game, man. 
That game was a lot. <laughs> I had a lot of feelings. Piotr Kochekov gets a shutout. Banachek looked pretty decent. The New Jersey Devils defense looked decent. I want them to make the postseason. Obviously, I've been saying that they are going to, and then to just like lose like that. My goodness, when their offense really needed to step up, you really do wonder. That team's scaring me a little bit, P. I don't really know what direction <laughs> they're heading go. in right now. For Carolina, I think, yeah, I'm the Devils, I'm just really disappointed. <laughs> Even since Hughes came back, no points in two games. I mean, people have been waiting uh, patiently for him to come back, and I'm sure the points will come, but it's just... Uh, you know, getting a little, you're sweating a little bit in Jersey right now, heading into the stadium series this week in the game against the Flyers on Saturday. But yeah, back to Carolina, Svechnikov came back. That's major. If you can keep him healthy for the rest of the season with this suffocating possession style, I mean, they might be the favorites in the Eastern Conference when it's all said and done in the playoff start. So yeah, I think like um, when you look at all these different guys on the on the Hurricanes, Nick, you know, I think like among the shot attempts, differential leaders, they have like something like eight of the top 12 in the league. I mean, this is a serious cup contender that is starting to pick up steam here. Yeah. And again, uh, we'll see what happens as well with Freddie Anderson, but I still think Carolina could utilize a boost in between the pipes. Like Ocheka has been great, but somebody to go mm-hmm. with him. Antti Ranta got hurt again, like lather, rinse, repeat. Uh, I just feel bad for that guy at this point. Yeah. He gets hurt. A lot, and I'm talking about goalies in, in general in this league, but specifically anti Ronta. It just seems like every week that guy is banged up. Uh, delivered by friends over at Skip. Uh, hold on Sharon Govich, Pete, is the question. And that's a good question because, you know, I fell victim to that with Gabe Velarde. I kept holding and holding and holding, and now I've just cut bait. But I I tend to think that maybe you cut bait on Sharon Govich. You rode that hot streak out. Um, it's fizzled as of late, and I think you move on to the next guy on the waiver wire. How would you attack things? No, I think that the Flames right now definitely have some sell-high appeal. It sounds ridiculous because they've just True. been sell, sell, sell the past couple of years. And, you know, guys forcing their way out, forcing their hand left and right. But they are peaking right now. I'm not sold, sold that they're going to make the playoffs this year. So Sharon Govich in 20-plus goal territory this year, is he going to get to 30 or 35? Maybe 30, but probably not 35 no. Uh, after Lindholm was traded. So, yeah, that's my stance on it. Sell high for the right price, Anna. I don't know if you can sell high right now on Sharon Govich. I feel like maybe that window has passed just a little bit if you were like a couple of weeks ago and he was getting those like goals every single night and every other game. That would have been the ideal time to sell high on a guy like that. I'd say maybe like wait another week or so because he's only had a couple of assists in his past few games, but. Their schedule isn't terrible, right? They're playing the New York Rangers tonight on Monday, but then they have the San Jose Sharks and the Detroit Red Wings, the Winnipeg Jets. They lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins recently. I feel like those are a couple of games where Calgary could do well. If they do well, maybe Sharon Govich is involved. And after that little stretch, before they have a bit more competitive of a schedule, that might be the time that I sell him. So I'm team hold for a week. Yeah, I would hold too, just uh, more so because there's not really many enticing names. I'm sorry for me on the waiver wire. It's like dead season on the waiver wire right now in fantasy hockey and guys are picking up they're just not lasting long on your roster so I'd probably hold on that front as well want to ask you guys as well Anna about the Colorado Avalanche four straight losses they've been outscored 16 to 7 I actually think it's a good buy low time on guys like Alexander Georgiev you're not going to get the big boys on that roster for a discounted rate but I think to keep in mind here Nathan McKinnon left Saturday's game after going face first into the ice so look out for that this week but guys like Arturi Lekkanen Jonathan Drew, and I think Colorado's going to find its gear, and they're just in a, in a rut right now, Anna. I'm not as high on the Colorado Avalanche as really? like a Stanley Cup contender. I think they are year after year. They wouldn't be my like go to pick. I know Pete's quite high on them. I'm not like down on them. I'm just not as high as I think the rest of the hockey world is on them because for me, they're such a top heavy team. And when you see stuff like that happen to Nathan McKinnon, who is responsible for pretty much this team's entire scoring and entire points production, if he ever misses time, they're in a very weird situation where the guy they're relying on is Mika Rantanen. That's pretty much it. They have no bottom six depth. I could look at Arturi Lekkonen as like the maybe one piece I would want to buy low on, but their bottom six forward group hasn't shown me much. So outside of their like top two defensemen and their like top two lines and maybe Georgiev being behind that team... The Colorado Avalanche have some holes that a major injury could really like cause this team to go into a bit of a spiral, Pete. Right, and they 
maybe could use a number two center, but the you know the top two guys on the board are are gone to different teams in that Western Conference. And one thing that worries me, especially you've seen it, Nick, over the course of this past week or so, since the All Star break, the road struggles twelve, twelve, and four. That's very mediocre, you know, uh, for an elite team out there. So come playoff time with this difficult road, even in the Central, playing Dallas playing Winnipeg and then if you advance playing Edmonton or Vancouver or whoever it is Vegas like you're gonna have to win some road games and I'm not convinced in that area just yet yeah and I think a couple of last things on on Colorado like I was intrigued by the Ryan Johansson pickup it just hasn't worked out to the extent where he's the three C now on that team I think they've just not given up but like they, they've mm-hmm. given him a, a lesser role and I would add too that Colorado is my Stanley Cup pick I, I gotta stand with them I, I think Nathan McKinnon is going to have a strong finish to the season. And they just seem like a team that is sort of gliding like Tampa does every year where they know they're going to get to the playoffs. They do just enough to get there. They get there and they turn things on. And I think health is a, a vast concern. And, and and that's a Colorado needs uh, to have a successful playoff run. So I do view that team as a juggernaut still. On the contrary, guys, um, from a fantasy spin, the Morgan Riley suspension will be intriguing to see who runs the first power play. And it all be at the least don't always get power plays. We saw that on Saturday. Not one single power play for one of the top units in the league. But Timothy Lilligren and is a guy I'm looking at in Toronto. He's not the best option, but I think the exposure to the big boys potentially on PP1 uh, would entice me enough to add this guy. Some other players I would look at, Noah Hannafin, Samuel Gerrard, Tory Krug, as I mentioned, at five assists on Sunday. We know Morgan Riley is going to get a lengthy suspension here. This is the best opportunity a guy like Timothy Lilligren is going to get in his career to kind of prove himself, right? At the end yeah. of the day, he was taken pretty high by the Toronto Maple Leafs too. Everyone forgets that as well, and he hasn't really lived up to that potential. And their defense has a lot of holes. That's a place where this team could improve on, and this is his biggest opportunity he's ever going to get. I like the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're a good regular season team. They seem to be trajecting towards getting healthier. And at the end of the day, after everything that they've gone through, I just feel like they're going to have a great end of the season, guys. Like, they're a regular season team. They're not a playoff team. They're not a playoff team. They're a regular season team. Their regular season has been disappointing compared to past years. I feel like they're going to go out in Toronto Maple Leafs style, which is climbing up the ranks and making people excited for the playoffs. It's not Toronto hockey if you don't have faith heading into the first round series. Right, Nick? Yeah. Fair enough. Pete, who do you like to pick up uh, to replace Morgan Riley here? Uh, There are a couple outside options as Rasmus Sandin. Of course, the former Maple Leaf uh, has been heating up lately for the Capitals. Ovi's scoring. I know they haven't been winning that much, but he's, uh, you know, he's picking it up. I think goals in four or five straight. And then Sandin is picking up some points by association at even strength. So you like to see that. Jonas Brodeen, Minnesota Wild. Faber has been carrying the load. Spurgeon's out for the season. They need some help if they're going to get back into this thing. And Brodeen is their workhorse back there. So he's going to get you a lot of category coverage. And then also, don't sleep on the strategy of trying to trade for Shea Theodore right now off someone else's IR spot. I'm not so sure how soon he's going to return, but he was one of the hottest defensemen in the league uh, prior to his injury this season. So uh, it sounds like he's skating again and maybe nearing a return at some point. Everybody, I tell you, is just sleeping on the Vegas Golden Knights, and I think we we sort of forget what happened last year and also the fact that they beat the mighty Edmonton Oilers last week. Um, Delivered by Skip, uh, Bob writes in, Alex Ovechkin, by low window, it's closing. What do I do? Does this guy fire you up? Uh, And I'll I'll, I'll let you go first. A five-game goal streak, a six-game point streak, 13 goals now in 48 games, now on pace for 21 goals this season. Um, the buy low window has pretty much closed. I think there was, uh, I think, I think it's, uh, maybe there's a sliver open barely. I think Alex Ovechkin's one of those guys where my biggest concern was his shooting percentage. It wasn't necessarily that he's not getting a ton of shots on goal, right? He's still over the 160 shots on goal mark this season. And now that he's picking up the pace, I feel like his luck's turning around. Like that's been the thing with me for Ovechkin. I'm not sold on the Capitals. Don't have this team making the playoffs. But Ovechkin can kind of do it on his own. He just needs some puck luck. It's coming his way right now. If it hasn't closed in your fantasy league, I think it will close very shortly. So you have to pick up this guy. There's no question about it. I'm just looking at that Eastern Conference playoff race, and it's very interesting. Like Detroit got Kane back. They're 
playing pretty good hockey for the most part. Uh, ever since Alex Lyon came back, we know that uh, pretty well by now. And then you also have the Leafs who have been inconsistent. The Flyers have been inconsistent. But there's a little gap between even those teams and the Islanders who have been pretty inconsistent as well under Patrick Waugh. Some nice victories against good teams, but uh, a stinker on Saturday at home in the matinee against Calgary. So, you know, that team is no no sure playoff team either. No, and again, the deadline. Like, I, I'm just so fascinated to see which names are going to be out there. Uh, because of everything we just mentioned, a lot of the big boys have already gone. Like, maybe teams get creative and guys we didn't think are on the table get dealt. Um, that's all I can think of because I can't remember a year, guys, where it was just this muddied when it came to the standings. Like, there's a lot of teams still involved in conversations. Like, we, it's funny. Like, we talk about Calgary and their prolific sellers, but they're still in the convo to make the playoffs the more they sell the better they do it's it's bizarre to me you know that's literally what I just said Nick like yeah. 10 minutes ago I said that exact sentence Nick is saying it like it's a hot take so I'm well, it guessing wasn't a hot he, take. Just, I just, he turns his volume down on his laptop whenever I'm speaking and I guess because he was just like oh my god wow, the Calgary Flames still wow. I know I know throwing shade out here because I said it exactly well, like that I'm surprised he he kind of takes the same strategy that I, that I've taken. He kind of stole my strategy, you know. I'm just I'm Bob. Just, I'm the oh, highlight yeah. of your life. The highlight of your life. Uh, hey, hey, you might not be wrong. You might not be wrong. <laughs> uh, my life is pretty pretty low at this point. Pretty low. Um, don't don't bet against Patrick Holmes. That's that's all I gotta say, Bob. Well, I'm moving to the hockey, and <laughs> I'm just you know I know you guys are on this conversation here, but something just jumped out as I'm screaming at my cat to shut up from from meowing into the microphone which might be better content than what i'm bringing to the table right now but uh arizona coyotes tonight i should have brought it up when you guys were talking about the flyers i'm taking the yotes tonight plus money at Ooh. philadelphia enough with this philadelphia being minus 160 favorites all right <laughs> let's go yotes tonight okay I was uh, I was looking at that. The the thing I'm after tonight is Jack Hughes. We mentioned it. Uh, pointless in two games. It's coming back. They're playing the Kraken. I think I'm going to take a stab at the Devils in regulation. And Jack Hughes over a, a point and a half in that game. I just think he is a marquee player, elite player in this league. I think he's getting healthier and better. And I think he's going to have that, that signature breakout like Jack Hughes type game. So that's probably what I would look at tonight. I like the Flames at the Garden against the Rangers, like that leave-off strategy from last year. I know they're yeah. not going to keep winning for the rest of eternity, but they could still catch the Rangers by surprise. So many different metrics. The Flames are either better than you expected or like, you know, middle of the league. They don't have any weak metrics. Like scroll through everything on NHL.com slash stats. You won't find a bad metric on the Calgary Flames. Very impressed with the Flames. Uh, took them against the Devils, and um, that worked out. And then for whatever reason, I just thought, again, the Patrick Wah and the, yeah. the sim simpatico nature of what was going on in the island, I, I took the Islanders against the Flames, and boy, God, the Islanders looked uh, just awful. But the Flames, like you said, Pete, they just seem like it. they got the goalie. They seem together. Now Kuzmenko's putting the puck in the back of the net. Something's going on over there with the Flames, and I would not be surprised if they uh, go into the Garden tonight and, and get the win as well. Well, as somebody who has a futures on uh, Ryan Huska to win the Jack Adams, I feel uh, pretty good, <laughs> although he ain't winning it. He ain't winning it, but uh, it's great to see Calgary finding their game, and I think you're so right. They're just sort of that tweener team, as, as Anna brought up earlier on, that they can go on a monster because she's the only one who can have that take, so don't worry. Uh, they're going to go on a monster run here. We'll see what they do between now and the deadline. I did want to outline the schedule. Um, February 12th to 18th, we got a 47-game slate this week, guys. Four on Monday, 11 Tuesday, three Wednesday, 12 on Thursday, one Friday, 13 Saturday, and three on Sunday. Uh, so the four-game teams you want to look at, Arizona, Los Angeles, New Jersey, and the two-game teams, Columbus, the Islanders, Vegas, Washington, and Winnipeg. Anything stand out for you, Pete? I mean, I'm looking forward to being at the stadium series later oh, in the week. Yeah. I'm sure we'll do a bigger preview on that with the two games. Saturday, Flyers-Devils. Sunday, Rangers-Islanders rematch from that Yankee Stadium game a couple, you know, actually about 10 years a ago. A real so baseball team, yeah. It, it's good to see uh, those those local outdoor games. You love to see it. 
I got to go with the Devils, too. I want to yeah. add a little note about a player we haven't talked about too much at all, actually, on this podcast. But Andre Palat sticking out to me right now, guys, because mm. of his lineup placement. He's on their top line with Nico Heischer and Jesper Bratt. And that line seems to be the only line doing anything for the New Jersey Devils at this moment. So until Jack Hughes figures out his stride, they figure out exactly who he's going to be playing with. I like that line. If they're playing together, they've been putting up points. And that's that's my sneaky pickup for the week. I like it. Like, this is the week, right, guys, where New Jersey really has to find its footing. Because you lose a couple more games and a couple teams ahead of you win some games. Uh, I think you're looking at an eight-point deficit around there. And I think you're in big-time trouble as we get closer to the trade deadline. So, I think New Jersey is a fascinating team in fantasy hockey this week. DFS um, alone, I think, would would be some great looks. Palat's really started to heat up, as you mentioned, Anna. So, Definitely those type of teams I would look at. And I think in general, just to wrap here, like the, the, the betting lens changes a lot this time of year where I think teams who need to win start winning. And that's how I attack it strategically as well. And we always overreact to a couple of bad games for sure. some of the best teams, right? Like even Boston, it's been kind of peculiar the past couple of games, losing to Calgary at home, losing to Washington, shut out at home. So those are things that like are going to shape whatever those teams do at the deadline. Boston's been a tremendous story, but they've lost a lot since last season. So maybe that might be catching up to them. Better that it happens now than in the first round like last year, Anna. Yeah, and the Devils have a sick uh, broadcast crew, guys. Just saying, oh. if you don't want to watch them actually playing, the pregame and intermission show is where all the action's at. <laughs> All right, let's tie a bow in this thing. Uh, week 18, mailbag edition coming up later on this week. We'll continue to field your questions, get you closer to the trade deadline, the fantasy deadline. I looked the other day, the fantasy playoffs are like five, six weeks away, so uh, a lot of your questions coming up over the next couple weeks. Many thanks to producer Bob Bender. For Pete Jensen and Anna Dua, I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice, delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.